I think the Silicon Valley location plays a major role. I mean, there are a lot of Stanford grads that are going to startups. Oh. Welcome to MBA Pod TV. I'm your host, Bob O'Keefe. Today we're taking you to the heart of Silicon Valley, to none other than the Stanford Graduate School of Business. Not only is Stanford one of the leading business schools in the world, but they're also one of the most selective when it comes to the admissions process. I'll be sitting down with Linda Abraham, president and founder of Accepted.com, an MBA admissions consulting and essay editing service. She's going to break down the Stanford application and give you strategies for tackling each of the essay questions. You'll also meet several Stanford MBAs who will give you insight on what it takes to get in. What are some aspects of the MBA admissions process that applicants may not learn from brochures, the website, printed materials? Well, I'd like to step back and first go with what they say they're interested in. Uh, let's go over that first. They have three stated primary criteria. The first one is what they call intellectual vitality, then is demonstrated leadership potential, and last is rather nebulous personal qualities and contributions. If you look at intellectual vitality, I mean, the easy way to measure that is your grades and your GMAT score, GRE score, since Stanford also accepts the GRE. Stanford insists, and I think with some, some good reason, that it's not looking exclusively at your test scores and GPA, that it will also look at other evidence of intellectual vitality. In terms of demonstrated leadership, I think the applicant has to re realize that that word demonstrated is there for a reason. It's not just because you want to lead sometime in the future. Um, they want to see evidence that you have led recently. The personal qualities and contributions, which is very, very broad, to put it mildly. When I think of the successful Stanford applicant, I think of the applicant who can combine an eye care attitude with action and initiative. So to be a successful Stanford candidate, you need to have put your words into action and then convey that in your application. Stanford receives over 7,500 applications each year with an acceptance rate of less than 10%, so you really need to be able to stand out among the crowd. When I was applying to UCLA Anderson, I spent time talking about my family, as well as my experience as an engineer in oil production, which was unique to my story. Let's talk to Linda about how you can stand out by writing great essays. But first, let's talk to some recent Stanford Graduate School of Business graduates. I applied to Stanford knowing that it was a very small school and that I would have a very intimate experience. I was really drawn to that small class size um, and that's definitely been held up since I got here. An incredibly collaborative community um, which uh, has been fantastic um, and also a very innovative school and I've loved the focus on entrepreneurship which is not something that comes naturally to me. I'm definitely a very risk averse person but um, the whole spirit of, of, of entrepreneurship which has been had be, has been great um, and I wanted a general management or general leadership MBA program which was definitely another reason that I applied to Stanford over some of the other schools um, which were much more fo focused on a particular function like finance or marketing. When I was working in Sydney I was uh, involved in startup companies and entrepreneurship and I really loved that and loved uh, developing new products and services and I found that you know, my, I started to define what I want to do in my long-term career and it was really around creating great products and services and being a leader or founder of a successful and great company that makes an impact. And I really felt before I came to Stanford that I didn't nearly have all the skills that I would need to achieve that and so that's the main reason why I wanted to do an MBA and then you know, also the reason why I wanted to do it at Stanford. Graduates of Stanford, they go on to manage the great companies, but I think the Silicon Valley location plays a major role. I mean, there are a lot of Stanford grads that go into startups, like Google 10, 10 years ago is a classic example, I think. But you also have Nike. So that entrepreneurial tradition permeates the, the experience, and I think it, it leads to a certain outcome. How should applicants approach the essay portion of the application for a Stanford MBA? First, I think you have to approach it like a puzzle, in which each piece, each element is going to bring out a different aspect of you, a different part, a different part of the picture that is you, the applicant. So what I would suggest is that the applicant sit down and just jot down notes, they don't have to write full essays, 
about what are the experience they want the Stanford Admissions Committee to know about. What are they proud of? What is revealing of themselves and their values? Again, using that jigsaw puzzle analogy, you say, all right, these experiences are going to best answer this question. And when I put them all together, it's going to paint the most textured, comprehensive, and impressive picture of me. The first question in the application process for Stanford 2010 applicants is, what matters most to you and why? How should they consider tackling this question? I think the key there is self-reflection. Derek Bolton, uh, who's head of admissions at Stanford, has said many times that Stanford's application essays are an exercise in accounting. Um, he maintains that there's no marketing involved. I would disagree there, but I certainly agree that, that the foundation for most successful applications, and Stanford's in particular, is a thorough self-assessment and accounting exercise. So first of all, you have to know your values. You have to have them, you have to know them, and you have to know where you reflected them in action. If you want to save the whales and you've never been to the beach, it's not going to work. If you value something, you think it's important, then how has it affected your behavior? When have you acted differently or acted specifically because of this value? If you haven't acted uh, in accordance with the value and you can't point to anything concrete, then that's probably not terribly important to you because maybe you spent more time watching television. And I think that that question and, and really the, the quality that's going to permeate the essays is an I care attitude combined with initiative. If you see a problem and you react and you develop a program or, or do something that addresses that problem. I mean a problem that's, that's out there that's bigger than you. And you do something to address that issue. That's something that Stanford's going to be very interested in and I think very impressed by. Essay number two says, what are your career aspirations and how will your education at Stanford help you achieve them? You have to know what your career aspirations are. An MBA is not an end in itself, it's a means to an end. So what do you want to do with your post-MBA degree? It's not a place for self-exploration. It's not like an undergraduate, four years of undergraduate, you know, find yourself. You are supposed to have a goal. And then the question becomes, what are Stanford's particular resources and programs and attributes that are going to help you achieve your goal? The one thing that really uh, sort of gravitated me towards staying at Stanford was the second year um, and it's just the, the the people on the roster that you can take classes from so the first year I think a lot of the business schools are very similar Stanford I know has just redone their curriculum so I think you know you get taught the materials in a different way but it's more or less a lot of the same material I think the second year is what I think they call them the practitioners the lecturers and it's just you know a, a who's who of people who, who've just done amazing things um, Andy Ratcliffe, one of the founding partners of Benchmark, um, Mark Leslie, who was the former CEO of Veritas, uh, Eric Schmidt, the current CEO of Google, um, I just you know off the top of my head, um, they're, they're, they're just like a bunch more. Joel Peterson, uh, absolutely fabulous, he was an investor in JetBlue, uh, big real estate guy before he sort of started his own private equity fund. Um, just unbelievable guy as well you know all, all these people I've, I was fortunate enough to get to know them so I think it's, it's just really the the caliber of um, these sort of professionals as well as the the great teaching in the first year. The third essay question uh, asks to choose two of four options first of all how should an applicant decide which of the two to choose? That's actually fairly easy you want to choose the two that are going to best present you so if you have a great teamwork experience you'll choose the option that relates to teamwork. If you have a great leadership experience, and keeping in mind that Stanford wants demonstrated leadership, you're going to choose that one. I think, I think these options in essay number three really reflect Stanford's uh, mantra. Change lives, change organizations, change the world. The, the key should be what is going to help you tell your story. If an applicant had to choose one aspect of their application to really focus on to impress Stanford, what would that be? I think the applicant may want to, in the self-assessment and accounting that we were talking about a minute ago, may want to assess what's the weakest element in the application and then work on that to improve that. They're going to want to sell their strengths to be sure, but the weakness can keep them out. 
So first you have to know why you want to go to Stanford, why you are fit with Stanford, what you're going to contribute to Stanford, and then you have to convince Stanford that that's uh, of, the, of the same things that you've convinced yourself. But you, you can only do that if you know your strengths and weaknesses, how they match Stanford's value, how you're going to achieve your goals by attending Stanford. Now that was a lot of insightful information that we hope you can use when putting together your Stanford application. That's a wrap today on MBA Pod TV. I'm your host, Bob O'Keefe. Visit us at mbapodcaster.com to register for weekly audio and video shows. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest news and insight on your MBA application process. Thank <laughs> you.